Welcome everyone to the spring update for the Cancer Center Cessation Initiative Coordinating Center. It's great to have all of you watching this video virtually. This is an effort that we're using for the spring of 2022 uh, to make our session on May 5th more efficient, um, allowing you to hear the update ahead of time and then we'll see all of you live on May 5th. So let's turn to an update from the Coordinating Center. So here's my agenda, and I'm gonna very quickly give an update of um, C3I, a really cool adaption of what we've done, the evolution of C3I into the Commission on Cancer sites, and then finally a little bit about the future. I'm using this mostly to say thank you to everyone. It is wonderful to have the 52 sites of the Cancer Center Cessation Initiative continuing to be so actively involved in this. Um, the National Cancer Institute views this Moonshot Initiative as among the most successful they've undertaken. And it's really because of all of you and your engagement. And, all of us at the Coordinating Center want to give you a heartfelt thanks. Slide. I want to talk a little bit about the impact. And with this slide, I'm showing where we are in terms of patients served, identified, um, and referred. And I want to make two points about this slide that takes us from January 2018 through December of 2021. The trend is all in the right direction with the um, exception of the first six months of the pandemic. We are now at a rate of about uh, 95%. This is the, a median screening rate of patients coming into the 52 cancer centers who are screened for tobacco use. A mean of about 10% of these cancer patients report they smoke. And we are now up to 18% of those cancer patients who smoke who are referred to a treatment program that's associated with C3I. We have a long ways to go, but this is markedly better than where we were prior to the beginning of the initiative. Next slide. And a slide that I just love, it shows our cumulative impact as of December, 2021, almost 77,000 cancer patients who smoke have been treated through a C3I program, a real success that all of you have achieved. I also want to talk about the effectiveness data of C3I. In this slide, you can see program effectiveness in the most recently summarized data from July to December of 2021. And it compares effectiveness rates at six months across the three cohorts and across all of the cohorts combined. Let me make a couple takeaway messages from this. First, we're comparing to the average for all smokers um, a meta-analysis that showed about 15 percent of smokers in general are successfully quit six months later c3i did about equal 14 percent second observation you can see that the more recent cohorts did better possibly reflecting the recency effect of implementing these new programs. It also suggests that for the programs that are more mature and have been in the field for a while, there may need to be some refreshing for staff and clinicians. The third and final point, we know that about half of smokers quit upon receiving a cancer diagnosis, thus, we're achieving a substantial success rate about equal to that of the general population among those hardest to quit patients who received a cancer diagnosis and continue to quit. Taken in total, 
this suggests extraordinary effectiveness of the C3I programs. Many of you know that over the last year or so, we've been doing exit interviews with C3I sites who have completed their funding. And I wanna focus on four themes that have come through those exit interviews. First, as a result of C3I funding, it has been a clear and powerful organization and community culture shift around the importance of smoking cessation within um, cancer center sites. Secondly, there has been an expansion of tobacco related research and training um, opportunities and outcomes. So more people are getting engaged in tobacco training and research. Thirdly, there has been strategic progress around sustainability and expansion. This is not to say that every one of the 52 centers have fully um, embraced and paid for the sustainability of your programs, but we've had progress in almost all of the sites and there's a hope for sustainability well beyond NCI funding. And finally, um, one of the most powerful themes has been what a positive impact the C3I programs have had on patients. Um, we've had a population-based impact and we've had an individual impact at the level of patients. Next slide. In terms of disseminating products of C3I, enormous progress over the last uh, four and a half years a total of 139 publications and presentations with over 50 peer-reviewed journal articles. You can see all of these publications on the C3I website and the link is shown to you here. And I just wanna um, give another reminder to all of you, please inform the Coordinating Center of your publication plans and your successes, small and large. Next slide. A uh, graphic of some of the journals we've published in, um, an array of impressive publications. Um, again, kudos to all of you. Next slide. So I wanna transition now to talk a little bit about the Commission on Cancer. And when we started C3I, one of the core goals was to learn lessons that would help inform a change in the standard of care in oncology settings, a change that would ultimately result in every cancer patient in America who smokes being identified at the time that they're diagnosed with cancer and being offered some treatment to help them to quit. We know this is essential because if a cancer patient quits smoking, that patient is much more likely to survive their cancer and much less likely to have a second primary. Moreover, their toxicity from cancer treatment will be less and their overall health will improve. This is apart from all of the other benefits of quitting smoking that any patient achieves. Thus, we will not be complete with our work started with C3I until we make this a national standard of care. And we've had some progress in that area. Through with colleagues from the Commission on Cancer, um, led in part by our advisory board, as well as by Dr. Tim Mullet, who is the CEO of the Commission on Cancer, this entity which I'll describe in just a moment, has taken on the implementation of identifying and intervening with smokers as their new quality initiative. Let me tell you a little bit about the Commission on Cancer, or COC. Slide. It's responsible for establishing standards for more than 1,500 community cancer clinics across America. It in essence is the place where patients who don't go to NCI designated cancer centers get their care. And in fact, treats the majority of cancer patients in America. 
Secondly, it conducts surveys among those sites to ensure that they're complying with minimal standards of care. They co collect data on measure, their measurement of each site to those standards. They use the data to monitor and to evaluate and to grade these 15 sites. And then they develop educational interventions to improve. Thus, once a commission on cancer um, site becomes part of the COC, they agree to meet the standards established by the COC. And COC has now taken on the establishment of smoking cessation as one of their core standards, a giant step forward that will change cancer care nationally. Next slide. It's gonna be a two-part initiative um, with the first part built around ensuring that every one of these 1500 plus clinical cancer sites in the community ask every patient who uh, pre presents whether they use tobacco or not. Um, this is being built as an elective quality improvement project. It will leverage um, the existing resources within these centers to, to do this. The first part of the program is to ask and document tobacco use status, but that will then be followed up. Um, this first program is called Just Ask, and the next program will be called something like Just Help, and it's to provide some evidence-based cessation treatment. So this began in January of 2022. Um, Webinars are occurring, and it's estimated that greater than 800 of these 1,500 sites are going to take on this elective quality improvement project. If, in fact, it is shown to be effective, it will be implemented as one of the standards of the COC that every one of these sites needs to identify and document tobacco use status, with, as I mentioned, the next phase being helping patients to quit. Slide. I want to end with a little bit on future directions for the C3I program and its coordinating center. And as you know, the role of the coordinating center is to support the integration of evidence-based cessation treatment into routine cancer care. And we do that by providing to you technical assistance, collecting data, serving as the hub of knowledge integration and dissemination, and helping to sustain and establish a collaborative consortium that will continue on long after C3I funding ends. We have heard from NCI that they are open to the expansion of the initiative for at least another year with the year beginning on October 1st, 2022. Um, that is not yet approved, but we are optimistic um, that uh, through this additional NCI funding, um, the coordinating center will be able to continue and serve in its role of serving each of you. Next slide. Um, many of you have heard from or met Dr. Jennifer Bird, who is now responsible for data collection and analyses um, at C3I. I want to give another heartfelt thanks, and that is to all of you for delivering data. Uh, I know it's a burden, um, but boy, is it important. It allows us to make the case to NCI and the broader NIH that this initiative is changing clinical practice and will serve as a model for um, how to help oncology patients to quit. We want to continue collecting data um, through June of 2023. Um, NCI views this as extremely important and asks us which and, and how many of the 52 sites have been able to produce data. Thank you for producing this data. Please, please, please keep it coming. Next slide. We're working now to harmonize the data so that we can share it with you. 
So um, all of the quantitative survey data um, is in the process of being harmonized, combined. Um, we're producing a code book with standardized variables. And our hope is to have this available to you um, because many of you have expressed an interest in doing some of your own analysis to have this quantitative data readily available for you in the summer of 2022, just a few months from now. Next slide. In terms of the qualitative data, um, the coordinating center has to run the analysis and share the results because of um, IRB issues. Um, it's not directly shareable, but it does include site interviews and um, at the beginning, um, as well as exit interviews. And we did midterm interviews with leadership directors um, and IT teams. So there's a variety of qualitative data that's going to be available, and I think will be really informative as we begin to compile the lessons learned from the C3I initiative broadly. Next slide. The consortiums are going strong, and to all of you who are engaged, continue to do so, and those of you who aren't, consider joining one of the working groups, which are diversity, equity, and inclusion, family and social support systems, implementation science, sustainability, telehealth. Um, they're charged with advancing the science around these topics and to create infrastructures that will allow them um, to facilitate um, things like grant applications, papers, um, prepare primary data analysis, and in particular, we're interested now in having some of the working groups cross uh, network so that um, the synergies can be enhanced even further. Next slide. And that brings me to what I know you've heard before, but I want to urge everyone to attend um, the C3I cross working group meeting that will take place next Thursday, May 5th, um, from 12 to 2 p.m. Central Times. And you've heard a little bit about this before, but I just want to say it's going to be great. We're going to set up a um, sort of a friendly Shark Tank environment. We're going to allow the a variety of groups to present their ideas. And then based upon that, um, those groups are going to get some seed funding to go forward and implement their ideas. We've got um, a bunch of judges of the Shark Tank presentations from NCI and beyond. Um, as I said, it's gonna be friendly, it's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be a great way to advance science across the working groups. Slide. So I'm gonna end by saying thank you. It is wonderful to have the C3I sites continuing to work together. Those of us here at the Coordinating Center know it's an incredible uh, privilege to do what we're doing and to be in service to you. We have already changed cancer care and NCI designated cancer centers. We're moving forward to change cancer care even beyond um, with the Commission on Cancer Work. Um, stay engaged, stay involved. Join us next Thursday, May 5th from 12 to 2 Central Time and um, keep sharing the data. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.